I'd like to call this regular city council meeting of September 22nd, 2014 to order. We would like to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call shows all are present. Approval of the minutes of September 8th, 2014. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Joe. Uh, in the minutes on page, uh, on the page exactly, uh, page three, I believe my motion was not uh, worded correctly. Uh, there was a portion that I mentioned about sewer mains and that is not mentioned in the wording. Uh, so for the, for the record, I can, I can restate my motion uh, for the record if, if necessary or it's on tape, whatever is preferred. But uh, as I mentioned, the portion about sewer mains is removed from, uh, from the minutes. Do you feel comfortable you can recreate what his motion was without him saying it? I went word for word from the tape. I can listen to it again. Yeah, in, in the tape, I, I said that I moved to accept the responsibility of the water and sewer mains and fire hydrants. And in the minutes, it says uh, there's no there's no mention of sewer mains. So. Um. Anything else? I move the minutes sure. right, as amended. I guess. And supported, Beth? Yes. Okay, further discussion? <coughs> Don't fear to say aye. 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 Oppose? I didn't see any bills, so I don't think we're going to be approving any bills. Approval of the agenda, any additions or deletions? Uh, there would be two corrections. Um, under new business, we would change the motion because that was a postponed motion to read as the minutes were corrected to accept all water and sewer mains and fire hydrants as councilman rizzi stated and the second is an addition of an executive session for consideration of real estate purchase we would put that after council comments Mr. Mayor. Yes. Um, one other thing that uh, I, I noticed was not on the agenda and I made a request on September 17th. I requested the following added uh, Colonial Acres utility dedication, discuss current status and review pending and open items for dedication. I wanted to have an open and honest discussion with everybody uh, before we got into the motion <clears throat> and I didn't see that on the agenda for tonight. That's on the old business. Yes, yeah. Well, I'm sure we'll cover it, but I've made that's it's not the wording I requested. So I took it directly from your email. My email on the 22nd says I would like the following added to the September 22nd City Council agenda. Colonial Acres utility dedication discuss current status and review pending and open items for dedication. The above. Well, the agenda says. Cons uh, Review current status and allow representatives going to acres. Yeah, that's not what I, what I said. But uh, I'm sorry, I mistyped it. I thought I took it directly from your email. Okay, thank you. Somebody want to approve the amended agenda? Yeah, I'll move the agenda as amended to add the executive session and add the uh, addition of the word sewer and the motion under new business I'll second further discussion okay all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed mm -hmm. okay at this time it's uh, public comment if you wish to speak on any item not listed on the agenda uh, you can may do so come up to the microphone State yeah, your name my name is address. Gordon Siegel out of 240 Brookwood Drive I just want to say how our football team did so well in beating the fifth in our district 
and I tried to watch it on TV, and it wasn't on TV. Is our uh, the Halloween parade going to be on TV too? I'd like to ask that question. Nobody can answer it. Are we, are we are we broadcasting? We can try to answer in comments at the end. Are we on, are we broadcasting anymore, or are we out? Okay, that's your questions on that. Okay, we can answer that during council comments. Thank you. Okay, next. Uh, good evening. My name is Jasper Catanzaro, and I'm running to be your representative here in the 38th District. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I worked at Ford Motor Company in the UAW. I joined the Army when I was 19 years old, went to Vietnam with the 1st Cav Division, and was wounded leading a patrol. Returning home, I went to college at night and graduated with honors from Wayne State University. I retired with 40 years of service. I then became active in the VFW and the American Legion and helping veterans. So why am I running for office? First, taxes. Our pensions, our 401ks, and at least 25 changes that have hurt retirees, young families, charities, and just about every working person in the state. We are now one of the 10 worst states to retire in. Schools. In the 38th district, $52 million was cut in the last four years alone. Across the board cuts. Don't address school problems. Roads. Governor Snyder's very first budget, our roads were cut 12%. Michigan is now dead last in road funding, and we can see what that has done. Term limits was to get new blood and ideas and not elect the same people. My opponents have found a way around it. They're switching jobs. Our legislators are just following the party line, whether it's Republican or Democrat. They get full-time pay and only work 86 days a year. Our legislators are the fourth highest paid in the country. So what can I do? In most cases, the federal government gives the state three to four dollars for every dollar we invest in infrastructure. So we need to stop diverting gasoline taxes and put that money into our crumbling roads and bridges. We need to fix the electrical grid, 10 to 40 percent of our electricity is lost in the transmission from the power plant to your home. Our water and sewer systems need to be fixed. Some of the pipes are 100 years old. That's why we had a record number of water main breaks this year. Right now, unemployment in Michigan is almost 20 percent higher than the U.S. average. Michigan ranks 47th in employment. It has to be done anyway, so fixing the infrastructure would create thousands of good paying jobs. And when people work, they pay taxes, they don't collect unemployment, and they spend money here in Michigan. It pays for itself and is good for business. And third, we need to spend wisely. This means infrastructure spending, school spending, and spending done to make sure we get value for our tax dollars. The cheapest price is not always the best value. I'd like to thank the mayor, the council, and you people. Thank you. Thank you. The Democratic Party. You have to run on one party. Anybody else wish to speak? Go ahead, Chief. Just uh, real quick, I apologize. Um, uh, to clarify for Pumpkin Fest coming up this weekend, we're supposed to have some gorgeous weather and to hopefully alleviate some of the um, matters that arose in, in previous years, both nights are going to have a set occupancy limit. Um, we're, there's 1,600 uh, for, for each night. Once that number is reached, those people will receive a wristband and they will be free to come and go as they choose throughout the evening. But once that 1,600 is reached, no additional folks will be left in. So it'd be just like going to a concert or a movie theater. Once the tickets are sold out, they're sold out. But once you're in, you can come and go as you want. So especially for Saturday, it would be incumbent on folks if they want to make sure they can get in after the parade, go down, get your wristband, and then you can walk in at whatever time you want. So uh, given the weather, I fully expect and, and I hope for the organizers that they sell out. But on the flip side of that, I do expect that there'll be some folks that probably get there once the event is sold out. 
One of the major issues last year was people being able to re-enter. We've corrected that issue. Um, there's just, I, I think the popularity of this event has gotten to a point, as we discussed months ago, of where do we hold it and be able to fit all the people. Um, for your um, knowledge, the occupancy this year is about double of what we were last year because of the expanded footprint. So more people will be allowed in, but I still uh, hope and, I'm, uh, and afraid at, uh, in the same sentiment that it will sell out and there'll be people that show up that will be turned away. Uh, but there won't be a line of folks to get in because once it's sold out at that point, it doesn't make any sense for people to wait around. So hopefully they would then patronize the local businesses. And chief, that's for the beer tent only. That is for the beer tent. Thank, thank you for clarifying. That is, that is for the beer tent and the beer tent will be open both Friday and Saturday this year. And that attendance or that, that ticket policy, if you will, will be in place for both nights. So um, we've been in constant contact with both Chief Collins, uh, Department Head Martin, myself, the Pumpkin Fest Committee, um, the occupancy thing we've been working with them on. So we're going to see if it works. It's There's been a lot of back and forth, and we did change things to try to address issues of previous years. So just wanted to put that out there. So if somebody comes, they don't want to go to the beer tent. They they still have to have the, they're still part of the 1600, right? This, I, I should clarify, this is for the Wells Street lot only. So there, there there's an area that will be confined for the for the music and the beer tent is going to be one occupancy limit, and that's at 1600. If someone wants to come down for the, the bouncies or the food vendors that are going to be on Whipple and Lake Street, that doesn't count. That's open. No, I'm saying they go through the same gate to get in. Yes, sir. And uh, they pay a fee to get in, if drinking beer or not. Correct. And, and I am unsure of what that cover charge is. I, I don't want to speak for that. I do know that there, there is a cover charge. Okay, so thank, thank you. you. Okay, um, anybody else? Make sure. All right, old business. On discussion of uh, Colonial Acres Utilities, review current status, and allow representatives to speak, of course. We would, anyways, don't have to have that written here. Um, I, it, it would probably be helpful if we could tell you what we we did meet as a group. Oh, what date was that? The 11th? Tuesday after the last meeting. Okay. Tuesday after the last meeting? All right. Thursday? Thursday after the Thursday. last meeting. Thursday. Okay, that's what's throwing me off there. Okay. So that would be just about the around the 11th. So um, I thought we made terrific progress and got a sense of direction. And then, uh, and I felt... Tell me if I'm wrong. I see the representatives I've met with sitting here. Uh, we agreed that uh, it's possible that you, we would need more than this two weeks to really have every, all our T's crossed, I's dotted that routine. And we, at that point, it also offered our personnel to help you reach your goal of meeting the letter of the law, so to speak. And uh, so, I know there's a rush and they want you want it done tonight. Personally, I'm having, I, I, from what I understand, we're 90, 95% of the way there. That's remarkable, I think. And uh, I've heard nothing but positives lately coming from uh, Colonial Acres uh, reps and so forth. That, but there was still a couple critical things and I guess I fired over you, Tim, to address what the real issues still left are. <clears throat> What I would suggest is if it's okay with Jesse, Jesse might be willing to address some of the engineering issues and I will address more of the legal issues. Uh, we did meet on Thursday, September 11th. Uh, progress was made. Uh, I identified in writing some of the concerns that I had with the legal issues. Um, I've worked with Ms. Kurtzweil since then and we've made considerable progress regarding those issues. Uh, we've now received sealed and signed drawings from the surveyor at MEGA. Uh, I think they're sealed by Mr. Pruss. I forget the gentleman's name who attended last meeting. Um, uh, we do have the easements. Uh, we're aware that some of the easements will be of 
a narrower width than your policy requires. And uh, I don't have great concerns from a legal standpoint. Jesse can help address that from an engineering standpoint. So the one thing that we do not have that I think needs some work that I need to comment on back to Ms. Kurtzweil is a, it's a repair and maintenance agreement that will provide the city with some additional flexibility outside of the easements that are proposed for dedication that would allow us to deal with uh, unusual circumstances due to deflection or the pipe not being precisely where it's described or encroachments such as buildings or a, an extremely deep pipe mm -hmm. such as a sewer pipe. Mm -hmm. That would allow us some additional space outside of those easements to make to allow us to do what we need to do as far as repair, maintenance, and replacement ultimately. That still needs to be worked out. Um, I have resolved, uh, received additional documentation from Ms. Kurtzweil regarding the authority to sign the bill of sale and the easements. I find that acceptable. Um, and I can probably... <clears throat> So as to the bill of sale, Jesse, I, I have a question for you, whether there are, I'm not sure if you could specify whether the, what of the appurtenances that are included in the bill of sale are things that we would not normally accept under the policy. So um, as far as the, so we have survey documents, the easements, and the one thing that I need to work on with Ms. Kurtzweil is the easement agreement. and. I will try and find my list here. <clears throat> what he's talking about is the easement area, if it happens to go bigger, because we want safety involved here, we're going to dig up some more of your lawn to get at it. You're not going to have a problem with that, are you? You're going to get out there with the tape measure and measure? Yeah, and, uh, you know, maybe have what? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think that summarizes where I'm at from a legal standpoint, and I can chime in on anything that Jesse needs help on as far as the engineering. Okay, this is Jesse Vandercreek from HRC, which is our engineering firm. Good evening, Council. Um, just to elaborate a little bit on what Tim referenced, um, what we received uh, in this last week uh, was a very uh, concise set of um, certified, surveyed, uh, sealed easement documents prepared by Mega Land Corporation. Uh, it's been very bene beneficial at uh, comparing what was found in the field by Mega um, against uh, the actual field measured drawings from 5A, B, C, and D uh, that were prepared um, field measurements taken 1986, for example. Um, I feel confident that given the age of the development, uh, certainly it wasn't developed under the current standards, uh, nor were the current uh, uh, policy for utility acceptance standards in place at that time. Uh, I feel that this data does arm the city with the knowledge it needs to go out, locate, and identify these utilities for maintenance in the future. And really, that's what we were looking for. Um, we do have that. That being said, there are two key notes on this uh, um, um, easement cover sheet. Uh, one of them indicates that the sanitary, the water main sanitary sewer structures were surveyed in the field on April 4th, 2014 in an effort to verify the easements are enclosed herein and have the proper coverage of the utility. That's key. There's only two notes here. The second one, which was an area of concern from everybody in this room, I think, existing water mains bend and deflect in between structures that appear above ground. A combination of as-built plans and surveyed structures was compiled to best represent the existing location of the utility. Again, 
This does accomplish the initial objective of field verifying where those utilities are. In the event that that second note does come to fruition, that there are bends in that main between the structures and we have to work outside the easement to repair those in the future, then the amended access agreement that uh, Ms. Kurzweil and Mr. Wilhelm are working on right now should satisfy that last area of concern. Now, the only thing that hasn't been done here now that the city is armed with this is an actual sampling of the uh, verification of these in the field. When we brought these in in the past, the city has spent um, some time with a representative of the development and sometimes a representative from our office, not always, uh, to go out and take a sampling and just verify and make themselves comfortable that they can utilize these documents to respond once the city does agree to take these utilities under their control. I think we've come, like the mayor said, an awful long way and I think that shows a great deal of uh, cooperation between all parties here just within the last two weeks. Okay. Well, I have a question. The, uh, do you have a, a ballpark uh, on how much creating the documents that you intend to create that will pit the structures against what the underground is will end up costing? I'm not proposing to create any additional documents based on what's been provided. There's been a significant amount of field engineering performed by MEGA and the meets and bounds descriptions of all the easements that should encapsulate these utilities. <coughs> but again, knowing that there may be an, an unknown underground or deflection that may be right on the edge of a skinny 12-foot easement, we know that the city's going to have to work outside of that easement to effectuate a repair. Uh, this modified uh, access agreement would really resolve that concern the without the creation of additional drawings or uh, engineering work in the field. Okay. I don't believe that's necessary. I think that that's been done. All right. Now, you had suggested the structure to structure deflection. So in the event that, I mean, because we don't re actually have an overlay to have a clue of whether they come within 10 feet of a structure that we would typically not accept as being appropriate. <coughs> so is this, that second note agreement going to end up covering that as well? That's the intention. Okay. That if we go out there and we've got to isolate a main between two gate valves and we find that that main is right on the edge of that 12 foot easement, this amended access agreement would empower the city with the authority to work outside of that and complete the repairs necessary without subjecting itself to any further liability on private property. And I think that that's really the key piece of work that needs to be created to make this happen. Right. But it's not in the form of additional engineering documents. The only other thing that I had a concern was this is a deviation from what our policy is. Um, it, it seems like a great solution to accomplish the task at hand for this particular unit. But it does create a precedent for any other private developments that might end up wanting to take advantage of our policy and bring their systems in. So I would hate to find out that we've created a vehicle for them to not have to incur whatever expenses were necessary to fulfill our policy. I'd say it's a, a more modern facility and they have essentially their stuff isn't so old that they would have all the electronic data and everything that would be typically necessary to to meet our standard for for this policy to be put into place i don't want to leave a loophole so that they don't have to do something that they would uh, ordinarily be obligated to but i'm mostly concerned i think with probably the um the motor or the mobile home park because that's very old and uh, I don't know how, what kind of drawings they have that, that reflect whatever their system might end up being. So are we creating an opportunity for them to just say, well, you know, here's a fire hydrant and that's where the meter is, so figure out the rest? Well, I, I, I think your, your dedication policy says that if they meet certain criteria, you will consider accepting a dedication of private utility systems. 
That being said, I think all of any development that's currently developed should be evaluated as an individual project. It's going to have intricacies and different characteristics and facts specific to that development. There's going to be different documentation regarding the information about how the infrastructure was installed, how the development was developed, at what time, what the engineering standards were. There's a number of factors that would make each project individual. You would need to evaluate them all based on those factors. And I think that's what you've done <coughs> for Colonial Acres, is you've, ta you've started with your policy and because of the age of this and the other circumstances surrounding it, we've tried to evaluate it against the policy and identify ways where we still meet the intent of that policy, but maybe not the specific letter of it. Well, I just would like to make sure that we're not creating something that isn't an equal application to anybody <clears throat> that, that wants to avail themselves of our, our offering. That's all. I think if they, you know, you have the policy out there, but I think you would have to evaluate what they present to you just as Colonial Acres has. Uh, you we don't have, have a concern about it, it that we can be protected from, from this creating a mess somewhere else, and I'm fine with that. Yeah, I think you'd have to, you know, I think this particular request is being evaluated at, under its own circumstances. Exactly. As to any other development. I don't think that it sets a precedent because no two particular projects are going to be that similar. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Mike. So Jesse, just to put this in plain English, it sounds like you're pretty confident that you can find the water mains. You're pretty confident you can find the sewer uh, mains. And in the event you cannot find them or there's some deflection, once this agreement, I think it's called expansion, Expansion access agreement, right, 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 right. Once that's nailed down, that will cover everything else that maybe you weren't 100% confident about. It will. Okay. Mr. Mayor, that's yes. all I have. Tell. You know, tonight is the first time, as I recall, actually hearing from anyone representing the city that the documents have been provided and satisfactory. And I think that's a big step, and uh, I think that is uh, <clears throat> admitting that, you know, when you're wrong, that that's, that's what you do. So I'm glad to hear that. Um, one thing that I am concerned about is that history repeating itself. Now, I will explain a little bit further what I mean by that. Um, originally, we were told that it would only take two more weeks. Um, the next city council meeting is October 13th, so that would be, by my calculation, three weeks. So. <clears throat> My fear is that in the next three weeks, um, going back and forth between the attorneys and whatnot and um, engineering that, hey, all of a sudden new, dedicate, new documents are needed or new policies are needed or this document uh, contract is not <laughs> worded right and you know how lawyers keep in, I mean, it's, it can go back and forth. So that's, that's my concern. Um, I'm, okay. Um, I reviewed the tapes from the last city council meeting uh, many times, and I'm a little disappointed about how this whole thing was handled, and it kind of goes back to what I was saying about history repeating itself. Um, and I'll just go through how I have been presented this, and I think the city and the community and the rest of uh, maybe council would see it the same as me. I can't speak for everybody else, but how it's been presented to the public as I see it. Um, we've been told repeatedly that Colonial Acres needs to provide engineering plans, and now we know that the city has been in possession of these documents since the 80s, and the city has always denied, until recently, that they did not have these documents. Um, now, I'm not going to accuse anybody of hiding documents, uh, misplacing them, whatever you want to call it, but it's hard for me to accept that these documents cannot be <coughs> located until recently. I find that made very concerning. <clears throat> um, last council meeting, I learned of a missing corporate minute book, um, something keeping all of our records. And to this day, tonight, this minute, I have not been informed by anyone in City Hall if that has been located. It uh, has been located, and the additional amendment that the members from Colonial Acres were seeking has also been located and provided to them. Okay, so this is new news to me tonight. I, apparently it was found in the last two weeks 
after it was been missing for I don't know how long, um, but it was found. Um, and perhaps the most disturbing aspect to me is that the city has already gone down this road before. Uh, for years, uh, again, denying the city denied responsibility of controlling utilities for phases one through three of Colonial Acres. And uh, we recently learned from the city attorney that in 1981, the city passed a resolution accepting the easements and water and sewer lines for phases one through three. Um, so all these years we were led to believe that the city was not responsible when in fact they were. So uh, what, from what I'm seeing and I'm hearing is lost engineering documents, a missing minute book, corporate uh, minute book, uh, and oversights for the last 30 years, and now we need three more weeks. I'm just a little, a little uneasy about giving three more weeks. Who said we needed three more weeks? Well, Mr. Kramer, I believe you said that. Um, when Mike, did I say three more weeks? Well, you didn't say three weeks. You said two weeks. I didn't say weeks. anything. Yeah, well, I'll repeat what you said. Two you weeks said, ago, I said two weeks. We are now on the cusp of approving this motion, and you bring up all this stuff now? You said, I will quote you what you said. I have it right here. Believe me. I know what I, I said. I'm all for this 100%. I want, this to get the, I want to get this thing done. All I'm asking is that we have, like the mayor said, two weeks. Yeah, and look what we've got. Did you see all the emails we received yesterday from the city attorney? Did you read any of those emails? You know, I'm not under a uh, death position here. I'm not in court, so I don't know what you're trying to get at. Oh, I'm just I'll, trying I'll, to save, do... I'll save my comments for later. Unbelievable. So, okay, Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, what I've heard today from, from Jesse, Mr. Wellum, and uh, mostly by waving and nodding her head from Attorney Kurzweil, is a healthy dose of common sense that has happened between our last meeting and this meeting. And it sounds to me like we're on the cusp of an agreement that will satisfy everyone. I think we need, what, a document uh, that, that you have a, a, uh, collaborated on, an access agreement that resolves uh, 95 or, or better percent of all of our issues. Uh, am, I, am I correct in that, gentlemen? And Ms. Kurzweil? I do think we need additional time to work that out. Right. And I don't see any reason that it can't be worked out. And, and would the three of you be able to estimate how much more time you need? My, my client's uh, coming in from Florida, <clears throat> so I'll have an opportunity to spend some time later on this week with them and take some things off the table, put some things on the table. <laughs> Some more negotiations. So, uh, I, I, so I think the access agreement is. Tim, I haven't seen your. I, I've not. Um, I personally witnessed comments that uh, Ms. Kurswald made to Mr. Wilhelm, and they're working towards a solution. I don't think it's necessarily a disagreement. No, what it is is um, the the access um, expansive agreement is a very interesting agreement. Um, you don't see too much of them in real estate developments. Uh, but you do use them to sort of uh, fill in the gap when you have an issue uh, like this. And this particular expansive agreement is, um, and I haven't seen your latest revision, Tim, so I apologize. I, I can't comment on anything that you've done, um, you know, for today. Um, but, but on this particular expansive agreement, uh, uh, the client is requiring that it be temporary rather than permanent and that it reverts back to the original um, easement dimensions that are in the recorded documents when the city is done using that expansive agreement. Right. Uh, we do require, uh, and there's nothing wrong with that, you have access to that expansive agreement 24-7 uh, for emergencies, uh, whatever. And um, additionally, um, I added some language uh, for comfort for my client um, that if the city should approach a building within 10 feet, uh, that we somehow have a property manager, do you see that? Uh, just be contacted so that they can do a little bit of assessment that relieves the city from making a decision as to whether to continue at that point. And the decision to continue then can be made by the property manager. And then that way the city is sort of relieved from the responsibility of making a decision as to whether or not further use of the easement um, will interfere with uh, pavement, sidewalks, um, structures, et cetera. So it's a, it's a very unique um, easement agreement. I've done only three of these in, in my real estate career. 
um, but they do come in very, very useful, and this is uh, carefully drafted, and um, uh, your attorney, the city attorney, Tim, has just been uh, very um, wonderful on getting the document back to me, and, and so we moved very quickly on it over the weekend. So I want to thank you for your time. So, on, thank on you. That. So, so then, uh, to finish my, yep. my comments, so. um, that and the opportunity for our staff to go out and actually locate a sample of uh, the various utilities, that needs to be done yet, and that could be done uh, in what time of, kind of a time frame, uh, Bob? As fast as we can get out there. We've been working very hard with repairing bridges that were destroyed over the past week, mm -hmm. preparing for pumpkin fest, mowing, taking care of the city. It's an added job that we do, but we're going to do it. Okay. So uh, if I'm prepared to make a motion that we postpone this matter then to our next regular scheduled meeting, if I have some, uh, some assurances that we can, in fact, vote on the motion at that time. <laughs> that Why well, put a timeline on it? I mean, when they've got their work done, we can end up acting on it accordingly. Well, the option would be then to table it, and it, it's much more uh, efficient. We're right at we, the brink of this being concluded, so I don't, I'm not understanding why the artificial I'm not throwing timelines. up the objections. I'm just trying to get us yeah. on schedule, and that puts it on our agenda. It appears just as it does today, and it's a... It's published agenda. It's part of the orders of business. Ted. It's, all right. Thank you. Ted. Thank you. Yes, Aaron. Um, Ms. Kurtzwall, are you representing, are you speaking for the, um, the Colonial Lakers people tonight? I mean, I, I guess I'd like to hear from some of the Colonial Lakers people if they feel this is going in the right direction and if they're happy with... Uh, if they're happy with the progress that was made and if they're ready to just hang on till the next meeting and 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 get their answer then i mean i just want to i just want to hear from the colonial eco residents i mean we've heard from jesse that you're pretty satisfied and you heard from tim that you're pretty satisfied and we're all on the brink of this cusp or whatever people are calling it and i just want to make sure that the 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 um colonial eco acres citizens are feeling that too well, I, I, I and will, I don't know who's representing. Well, well, first of all, I represent the land, the landowner, and uh, that's the Colonial Hunt Club Land Company. And um, actually, I'm going to be with them uh, this week. Uh, they will be coming into town, uh, and so later on this week, I'll have an opportunity to discuss. Um, I will be quite frank with you. I was not clear that or aware that we were that close um, to getting this resolved. So I'm hearing this for the first time. That that. We are 95% there and on the cusp. These are not words. And, and I apologize, Tim, if you've sent me anything. I have not reviewed it. So maybe you have made those comments yeah, in the community. Jesse and I spoke, not to cut you off, but okay, Jesse yeah. and I spoke after you and I spoke. And I think he's clarified that, that he now has field measure drawings for the entire development, which changes some of the circumstances that I, you and I have talked about. All I can do is I can recommend to my client um, when uh, we're together for Friday and uh, say that uh, I attended a council meeting was very positive um, there appears to be a uh, really good um, flow here on the, the HR and I'll have her hopefully this will be on tape uh, so that they themselves can review the council meeting and hear what HRC has to say and other individuals that will be with them that they'll be talking to this week and I think that in good faith, um, um, I will tell them to um, sit back and let's see where we are at. When's the next meeting? The 13th. 13th. I will just recommend, that would be my recommendation to them uh, to do that. As to Colonial Acres Phase 5, um, they have waived a, a conflict of interest, and so I have been making some representation, representations for them in some of the communications, but I think probably this is an issue if they want to come up and say something, I'd, I'd feel a little bit more comfortable if they made their own statements. I'd, I'd like to hear so that I can um, be more educated in a vote. So, yeah, I'd like if there's just one person here that would like to say that you feel that it's in good faith or whatever or you feel it's going in the right direction, I'd sure like to hear from you. Hi, I'm Cheryl McGrail. I live at 62622 Raleigh Court, and uh, I've heard, heard all these 
um, arguments back and forth. And please forgive my ignorance of protocol. I live on uh, Raleigh Court, and the property behind me has been sold, which was part of phase five. We had the lease on it, and the lease was dissolved for that piece of property. So at the Planning Commission meeting several weeks ago, we found out that there's going to be 60 single um, detached condos put in there when originally there was only supposed to be one more street put back there with 15 buildings. And I worry about the impact when you're talking about sewer expansion and all that. Um, how is that going to impact us? Um, when they build this complex back there and tie into our sewer system, is it our basement's going to be flooding, like what's been going on like in Royal Oak because of all the additional building? So I'm concerned about that. I had looked back at articles, and back in the 84 whenever it was, they said that when that street was complete back there, that our sewer, our water system, our sewer system would be maxed out. So that's my concern. I don't want to be having flooded basements. And as Ms. Kurt well pointed out two weeks ago, that it wouldn't cost you. We could get a special committee and have a special assessment, which means all of us will be paying for all the sewer repairs. That's my fear. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Claude Danielson, 25111 Jefferson Court. I guess I started all of this back five years ago. So I think that we could wait till the next meeting if we're sure that we're going to get a finalization of this. I think we're all very tired of this, and we'd like to see it come to completion. And, and we see that there's a, a good progress, and we'd be willing to, to wait one more <laughs> meeting. <laughs> so. and, and I understand what um, Glenn says about, you know, why you have the time, but I, I understand Harvey's point, too, where, you know, we all work better when we have a deadline. <laughs> right. <laughs> so We all do. Anyway, there's been a lot of talk back and forth, and we want to be very good neighbors. We've been good neighbors for 30 years, and we haven't really put that much expense on this city compared to the taxes and the water rates that we pay. So we just hope this will come to a, a good conclusion and get it done with. <laughs> I'm getting too old to fight this. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Claude. <laughs> Thanks, Claude. Thank you, Claude. <laughs> Yes. You know, with that being said, I, did you make a motion? I, I, uh, I said I was willing to. <laughs> I don't you know, talk. Let Joe talk. No, I just had a question. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm, I'm hearing a lot of good feedback. And like I said, the, you know, the, the past that's happened with the city and, and, you know, me being a somewhat new resident, it just kind of caught me off guard. I'm a little shocked because I'm a new person comparably to a lot of people here. So to hear all this past is, is kind of hard for me, so that's why I felt it was necessary to bring it up. Um, but what I'm hearing is a lot of good feedback, a lot of good faith. Uh, you know, so that was my intention of, of, of my comments, was to make sure that this does keep driving forward. Because if we don't put the pressure on, it won't drive forward. And it could be. So it sounds like things are going forward. And with the uh, comments by Mr. Danielson, I feel very confident that uh, that this will get resolved in the next three weeks. So since there is a consensus of uh, our council, I wish to uh, withdraw my motion. Um, but with that being said, I, I realize that we can always make another motion and uh, we can move forward, so. Are you making that as a motion? You want to withdraw it? Under the condition that this will be um, Resolved. <laughs> Resolved, or I, I guess want to say brought back on the table in three weeks, or how, however we want to phrase it. Maybe I can look to the attorney, our city attorney, for. I would suggest just a common sense added to the agenda for the October 13th uh, council meeting 
Uh, it can just be a general reference to Colonial Acres utility dedication. At that point, it would be a matter of uh, you can characterize it as old business, and we know the council can address it in any way they feel appropriate with a motion. Is that going to be enough time for you too, Bob? Don't you have something to do? Yeah. yeah. So you're good with that? That's Columbus. That, that time frame, you feel comfortable? Talking to me? I'm yeah. I thought you were talking to Tim. No, no, you feel comfortable with that time frame too? We'll get out there. You can there. check valves and all that. It's going to be a nice week. <laughs> <laughs> Is, are we open Columbus Day? Are we open? Yes, we're open Columbus, Columbus Day. Day. No, I know the courts are, so are closed, so I was just wondering if we were open. You're okay. off on Columbus yeah. Day? Yeah. Yes. Federal holidays. Yes. The world for <laughs> motion to postpone what you did before. You know what? Yeah, I think we should, uh, like I said, I think I'm willing to withdraw it, but I think we should still keep it on the, somehow on the agenda in so some that, way, shape, or form. It's not a problem. <laughs> there's, there's absolutely no reason for you to need to withdraw. Right the motion will still be on the table. It will be the exact same motion we talked about today. It will be the, on, on the agenda uh, on our 13 October um, meeting. You know, I think you're making it harder on yourself than you need to. All right. We will. Uh... All right. Then I'm going to make a motion that we postpone this matter until our meeting on October 13th, uh, 2014. For the discussions, you clear now where we're at on? Yep. Okay. All in favor say aye. Do we have to do a roll call or are we going to? No. All in favor say aye. 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 Oppose? <laughs> Voila. Nicely done. <laughs> Voila. Yep. Now uh, we move on to manager's report. Uh, the weekly report is not quite complete, so it will go out tomorrow. Um, that's why you didn't get it in your email today, but it will come out tomorrow. Um, you will also be getting a summary before the next council meeting on the sessions that I attended at the ICMA conference as well as several of the vendors that I talked to um, with some interesting information that I think the city should consider um, in the future for both economic development as well as progress for the city. And that will be in my report on the conference I attended. Um, I'm looking forward to Pumpkin Fest this weekend. I hope to see everyone there. I'm volunteering on both Saturday and Sunday. So I hope to see everybody there at different uh, opportunities. And other than that, uh, that's all I've got today. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> uh, Bev? I just want to say that I've been working with Colonial Acres in Phase 5 ever since uh, I got elected to the City Council. That was part of my thing for City Council was to be able to help the people of Colonial Lakers, so I'm glad to see that this will finally come to an end. And I'm looking forward to Pumpkin Fest, too, and I hope we have great weather. Okay. Mike? Yeah, it's my understanding that the Pumpkin Fest is still looking for volunteers. If you are interested in volunteering, uh, please go to the South Lion Pumpkin Fest web fight, our web fight, website, which is uh, www.southlionpumpkinfest.com. There is a tab for volunteering. Please use that tab and please volunteer if you have the time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Harvey? Uh, looking forward to the car show this week and the Pumpkin Fest, of course. And I want to thank all the uh, people involved in the negotiations on this okay. difficult matter to, for their hard work uh, and diligence. And uh, thank you, for people, for showing up second week in a row or meeting in a row. Um, it, it's good to see us getting this done. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Joe? Yeah, I as well want to, to thank everybody for coming out. I mean, I, when I was elected, I, I, I made a point of talking to people, and I just realized how engaged people are in this community and how much they care. And seeing so many people here, especially for such an important issue, is really, it's, it's truly great. Um, there's city council meetings where we have hardly anybody here. And when I see a full house like this, it, I think it's great for our community. It shows that we're involved. And I uh, just want to thank everybody for coming. Um, also, um, I as well look forward to the Pumpkin Fest. It's going to be a great event. Um, happy to volunteer for that as well. And uh, one thing I did want to ask for, for uh, Ms. Ladner was uh, regarding the city's website. And I was just curious if we've given any thought to 
I don't say improving it, but updating it in any way. It seems like it's been quite some years since it's been looked at. Actually, Just, it's one of the vendors that I talked to at conference um, that would come in and be able to update the website, also be able to take over doing the recording of the meetings, take our packets, um, index all of our packets and our minutes, and index them to PDFs and bring everything a lot uh, further advanced electronically. It's something that I'd like to talk to you all about um, for possibly next fiscal year. That's great because I know there's people a lot smarter than me who can go out there and do amazing things with websites and make it pictures crisp and nice links and, and I don't think, I mean I know college kids that can do this for you know, a couple, well, a couple hundred bucks or whatever it is, so thank you. I don't list the amounts, you don't know. Oh. <laughs> You're right, thank you Ted. <laughs> All right. With that, I'm, I'm done, thanks. Thank you. Aaron. Well, considering Pumpkin Fest is in my front yard, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you're going to have special edition seating over there and when they sell out? It is going to be, it is going to be, yeah. Can it's going to be, to actually, actually, I've already <laughs> sold my front yard. So it is, my front yard is not under my control on Saturday night. Wait, I've, I, I don't get free parking there? I, no, I've sold my yard. My yard has been sold to the highest bidder. I have no control of what happens on my front yard on Saturday. I think there's two That's spots capitalism. left in my yard. So. I, put out that, I put out the bid, and there was a, an organization that hired my front lawn. <laughs> Ready. Glenn. Uh, well, pretty much to parrot what everybody else has said, this has been a long kind of contentious at times, but obviously we're coming to an accord now. So I feel good that everybody's got a, um, a comfortable feeling we're coming to the end. I hope that um, there's been a history of, you know, these guys are bad, those guys are bad, and I'm hoping that people are getting enlightened to the fact that there's no one's really bad. There's been misunderstandings along the way. Um, people put their heads together and we've come to a, uh, the brink of a solution. So I'm glad to see that this is uh, getting to the end. I will be down at Pumpkin Fest helping on Friday to build the pumpkin, or the, uh, the hay pyramid and... Straw. Just straw, yeah, that's right. I'm not a farm boy, so <laughs> the distinction is lost on me, but... Uh, one point one point <laughs> but trying to get that, that whole thing going, and um, I, I certainly look forward to seeing some good music down there, and I'll probably even have a, an adult beverage while I'm there. So. Um, and I did want to say that um, in, in reference to your question about whether the Pumpkin Fest parade will be on, we don't make the videos. Um, there was a... a comment at our last meeting about the fact that the football game wasn't on there and as it turned out the guy that makes the videos that is on the cable commission had advertising which has clearly been prohibited on our by our policy for cable commission so or for cable programming to go on our, onto our station so once that gets squared away um, you know the games will be back on whether or not they intend to provide video of the parade. I'm hoping that that, that takes place, but as I say, we don't do it in-house, so that's all I had. Thanks. Thank you. And the car show you were alluding to was the Wednesday one, right? Wednesday night. Yeah, yeah. there's one Wednesday, folks. The last one. The last one, of the, you know, the Wednesday ones once a month. <coughs> um, homecoming, first time in since the 30s, maybe? I don't know. There will be no homecoming parade. They've opted out on that. They're just going to have a big party in their parking lot for their kids, and that's going to be their function, I guess. Bummer. Yep. And then, um, and then remember, the Pumpkin Fest parade is uh, Saturday at 10 o'clock through town. The weather forecast is awesome. Mm. And uh, I, I mentioned the historic or the uh, depot days last time, but I want to. I didn't mention that the historical society put that on. We're talking about a handful of people put that on. They're desperate for more people to join, and I see some historic people sitting in the audience here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we were to add these years up, we got about seven thousand years of, <laughs> in here, and they just need. They they meet once a month. It's very social. They have cookies and drinks sometimes. I mean, it's just, a, but it, it's history stuff about South Lyon, and you get you involved a little bit. 
It's not a lot of labor to it. We need volunteers. Desperately need volunteers to just join, if nothing else, the historic society. It uh, means very <coughs> lot and much to our community, that's for sure. And uh, let's see. As far as the commission, we haven't received any uh, the TV cable commission reports. We've not, I don't know how many times they've met or what they're, where they're headed on that, but we've not ever seen a report from them. And the Southline football team is awesome, by the way. Homecoming Friday night, if you don't go to the concert or go to the band behind Ten Pennies, because there's going to be two nights of that. But it's homecoming for South Lion, and it's a, South Lion is a very good football team. I followed them closely, as you know, for 31 years. They went out and beat Northville for the first time in 16 years. And Northville was highly, highly ranked and was kind of humorous to watch their reaction to it. They were flat out knocked on their heels, and South Lion won great. And I'm talking about the South Lion Lions, of course. And they're fun, exciting, you know, high school football is fun to watch anyways. And with that, I think we're about done here. And I appreciate the fact that the audience didn't just jump up and go. You know, when you were done with your segment, you hung around. I really appreciate that. And this is what happens. You get the comments from the council, and you can learn some more stuff that way as well. So salute to you folks for doing that. OK, we need to go to a closed session. Now I'm going to kick you out of here <laughs> to talk about a, a, a land issue. I'll make a motion we go into executive session to discuss a real estate matter. And this portion that was on TV lasted approximately 55 minutes. I'll second. Roll call. Okay, roll, roll call vote. Well, yes. Kowski? Yep. Rizzi? Yep. Wallace? I thought it was so weird, though. Yes, like, no. yes. 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 Yes.